Thank you. Uh, and uh, what a great day. I've been terrified all day thinking how I'm going to um, marry up what I'm saying to all these fantastic debates. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to talk mostly about demography. Um, in fact, I've got some trepidation. Uh, one reason is the person the commissioner study I'm talking about is in the room. Uh, he revealed himself before lunch. Um, um, and, and also that the report that the findings I'm talking about uh, is based on is not yet out in the public domain. So there's a certain kind of kid gloves with, with, with some of what I'm going to say. Nevertheless, what really the key message from what I'm going to say, much of it is um, facts and figures, I'm afraid, demography. Uh, never start with apology. But um, it is really to make the, the headline point that all of the things we've been talking about uh, up to this point have a dynamism. They're spatially dynamic, so I would say that as a geographer, but they're also temporally dynamic. Um, and of course, we have to think forward when we're talking about you know, our, our acknowledgement of heritage in the past, we have to think forward to, to how ongoing, changing demographic dynamics are going to, you know, kind of uh, revivify and continue that debate for the foreseeable future. Uh, partly it's to do with uh, migration. I don't want to overemphasize this point. Actually, we're not only talking about migration. Um, we are talking about all sorts of things. We're talking about issues of uh, intergenerational nurture. We're talking about issues of conversion. Uh, we're talking about identity switching and, of course, the big... Uh, sociological issue uh, you know, to, be, to, be, to be debated of secularisation. But nevertheless, in, uh, international and then internal migration are a key part of the picture. And so a lot of what I'll say will be talking about, about those kinds of issues and related demographic, uh, demographic change. So there's a need then, in, in essence, to consider how changes in religious demography and associated changes in demography and the presence of religious populations, faith communities, uh, will change religious landscapes in the future. A lot of the things we touched on are clearly uh, touching on this underlying point, if you like. Most of the presentation then is framed around um, work that I did um, with others, with Andrew Rogers in the room, uh, and with um, other uh, consultancies, uh, CAG consultants, and also LUC, land use consultants, um, under commission from uh, London Borough Buckingham Dagenham, to look at what are the current and then the future emerging uh, spatial needs for faith, faith communities in Buckingham and Dagenham? I said it isn't all about migration, but we mustn't lose sight of it as a, as a key important issue. You know, it's not to be reductive, it is to remind ourselves that Britain has been, long been and continues to be a destination for, for migrants and, and, and for patterns of settlement. Of course, these are out of account, issues of second, third generation, um, and wider questions of identity, you know, there's a problem of, of, of othering when you talk about migrants all the time. It's, it's not only about migration, but clearly migration is a very important part of this picture, as this growth trend clearly shows. Even allowing for Brexit, we should anticipate that, that uh, the migra migrant uh, component of the British population will continue to grow for the foreseeable future. That's on the national scale. What I'm going to talk about now, very quickly, lurch of spatial scale gear. Uh, is, is, is a localised case study, as I say, framed around Barking um, and Dagenham. As I say, this was a project that was commissioned by the, by the borough because uh, Barking and Dagenham is, among other places, one of uh, a, a series of hotspots in terms of movement. It's a very dynamic space it's on the, on the, to the edge of London, so it's a recep reception area of migrants moving out of inner Lon London into uh, neighbouring areas, in, the, in this case in the northeast of London. There are other spaces we could think of in, in, in similar terms, which are therefore spatially and socially very dynamic. So as I said before, it's a project that aimed to, to address both current and future needs for places of worship, faced by what the borough clearly recognises uh, as, as a growing issue around religious population growth and related uh, emergent spatial needs. The report should be out um, in March this month. Um, we, we hope it will be. So, as I'm saying, it's, it's a borough that's experienced uh, considerable uh, demographic change in recent decades. And clearly, from, from, and we'll see this from the slides I'm going to show in, in a minute, uh, we, we would expect this pattern to, to continue. It is a focus from both, of both international and internal migration, particularly from inner London. And just to bear that point out, between 2001 and 2011, it witnessed the fifth largest growth uh, in, in, in any local authority context across England and Wales in terms of the, the proportion of residents born outside England 
an, an island. It's culturally uh, and socially diverse, therefore. And we can think of that in, in many other terms, as well as religion. Uh, for example, language. We know that from the census, there were 72 different non-English uh, languages recorded in the census as the, the main language of, of households in the borough. So language is also an indicator of, of cultural diversity and difference in this context. As well as uh, being dynamically changing, it's also growing in absolute terms. So, so uh, the GLA um, has predicted that there will be a, a substantial uh, growth in population to the extent of 43.4% uh, from the, from the uh, 2000, from 2015, when they uh, conducted their, their projections, down to, uh, down to 2050. So, so substantial overall growth. Um, and we can also already see some of that taking place between the 2001 and 2011 censuses. So a 13% growth in the, uh, in the population within the borough. And within that, some, some major changes already just across the decade in terms of, of religious makeup. We can see, just the headline figures here, that the Christian population fell by 8%, the Jewish population by 22%, but that all other religious populations grew in that, in that period, Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists. Uh, but particularly the Muslim and the African Christian populations were, were real um, uh, foci for, for growth. So the Muslim population grew by 257%, major uh, growth, and also the African Christian population grew by 307%. It's actually one of the uh, boroughs, it's one of the local authorities in the UK where, in England and Wales, where uh, the African Christians are particularly highly represented. Um, I think it's the highest uh, in, in percentage terms, uh, seventh in, in, in absolute terms. And I gather from Andrew, the real expert on this in the room, uh, that Southwark is, is number one. But uh, clearly, then, an issue of, of, of changing uh, dynamics in terms of religious population makeup. And that's just bearing out the point from the previous, the previous slide. It's also reflected geographically. I have to talk about geog geography at some point. So if you shift scale again uh, to below the borough, um, you can clearly see that there are patterns of, of change uh, reflected again across the census, those, that intercensal period. Uh, across the wards that make up, the, the 17 wards that make up the borough. Um, it varies, of course, um, but all wards uh, witness growth ranging between 0.8% and 33%, uh, growth in, in population that is. And in terms of particular groups, again, telling dynamics, the Christian population fell overall in most of those wards, as did the Jewish population, whereas the Muslim presence grew uh, across all of those. All of, all of those wards uh, with particular concentrations in, in, in some key wards. And likewise with some of the other, in quotes, minority populations, Hindus and Buddhists um, and Sikhs. Another way to look at this is, is issues of segregation. Again, on, it's a bogey issue, perhaps it's not bogey, it's a very important issue, but it's a, I've smuggled it in to this discussion, partly one of the topics I work on, but it, again, it's important. You know, reckoning segregation, it's a, it's a politicised issue in terms of um, how particular communities, sub-communities are, are represented. So we, have, we need to kind of engage with it anyway. But it's important for us uh, in terms of how it tells us where communities are moving to in, in relative uh, terms, relative to each other. Quite against the, the, the thrust of, of, of segregation debates in popular parlance, actually segregation in Britain is falling. We know that. We've, we've, we've been able to show that across a series of censuses, all the way from 1991 to 2001 to 2011. So all that, that, that scare language, that scary language of uh, introspection, of, of uh, cultural isolation, of parallel lives, it is that. It's myth-making, and very dangerous myth-making, and we need to uh, treat it as such and, and be very bold about saying so. And that, that national pattern is, is replicated here in Buckingham Dagenham. So generally speaking, segregation has fallen for most faith populations across that intercensal period. I've highlighted some, some key ones here, but particularly the, the, the largest, um, apart from the small, quite small populations, Buddhist is quite a small population, but for the larger uh, groups, the Christian, uh, the Muslim populations, um, significant degree of, of fall in segregation. And then some marginal increase, but again, not, not, not significant for the Hindu and the Sikh populations. 
generally, in, when we think of segregation, it's an index varying from 0 to 100. Uh, figures from 0 to 30 are low, 30 to 40 are moderate to low, or low to moderate, and above 40 you start talking moderate to high. So you can see here anyway, segregation in the borough is, is not high, and it is generally falling. So that's good news. Well, the debate. Moving into uh, the landscape, the religious landscape issues that relate to some of that demography, of course it, it reflects some of this change. A lot of the things that you've talked about the speakers so far have talked about uh, in a lot more detail than I'm going to are, are clearly reflected in the changing religious landscape in Buckingham and Dagenham. We have new purpose-built buildings, so we have the Medina, Al Medina Mosque here on the left. We have conversions, so this is the main uh, Barking Gurdwara, which I believe, although Claire may be able to correct me, I believe is a converted school. But again, she may be able to correct me on that. Um, so conversions, purpose built, and then in terms of Christian uh, communities, older building stock, of course, and then the, the growing African Christian Pentecostal presence in terms of, particularly in terms of, 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 of newer uh, conversions. That's going to continue, and that's, I'm going to move into that, that issue now. What we're, what we're um, looking at in the borough, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit for the moment, but um, is a huge issue as those po particular populations grow, as particular faith groups grow in number, a huge issue of unmet demand, and that's really kind of the, the issue that, that, that motivated the, the, the borough council to, to, uh, to commission this report, as I understand. Just pushing the, the job a bit further, some fairly obvious points, but this is the distribution of churches relative to the, uh, to the Christian population. As you'd expect, there's a fair evenness of spread in terms of the, uh, the underlying population and likewise of the, of the related places of worship of the Christian churches. In terms of the Muslim presence, there is some uh, concentration. Again, segregation, remember, is low, but there, there are concentrated patterns. There's, there's, a, there's a degree of clustering, which again, you would you would kind of expect uh, to some extent. And the geography of, of, of the current geography of mosques reflects, uh, re reflects the underlying demographic uh, geography likewise. Um, similarly with the, the Hindu population, concentration to the, to the eastern side of the borough. In actual fact, uh, most, of the, uh, most of the Hindu uh, temples, uh, I, I believe, are in, in neighbouring um, areas and they're not actually in, in Barking Dagenham, so that, that explains from that, that east oriented geography. So in Ilford and other places, I think, is where you would find most of the, most of the Hindu uh, temples. And again, uh, some of that, that geography, that eastern focused geography uh, in terms of the, the, uh, the Sikh presence, although um, some, some concentrations of elsewhere in, in, the, uh, in the borough as well. So what does that mean in terms of issues of buildings and groups? So the survey that, that, that formed part of this study identified 109 Christian groups, 14 Muslim groups, one Hindu, one Sikh, one Jain. Um, of the Christian groups, 39 we kind of identified as, as traditional, these are loose terms, but generally referring to the Anglican, Roman Catholic, Baptist and Methodist groups. And then 70 newer groups, um, mostly Pentecostal groups, and, and in terms of building use, uh, so the survey identified that 52%, um, slightly more than half, um, were in purpose-built structures of one sort or another. And then a further 21% of fifth were, were con converted for, uh, for religious use. Interestingly, there were also other buildings that were being used in, a, in, a, in an unformalised way. So, so, so not all buildings were, uh, were, were, not all groups had identified buildings for me meeting in, 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 in other settings. The headline point again, huge issue of growing and unmet need for religious space for minority faith groups. I mean, that's borne out by this, uh, by this chart, which is just summarising the figures on the, on, the, on the previous slide. The survey also asked then, what, 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 are, what are the issues in terms of current needs and, and likely future needs? So, uh, so all identifiable groups uh, were, were, were surveyed and responses to this survey, this, this is percentage here now, percentage response to the survey, comparing uh, Christians with Muslims just for the, the sake of simplicity of this slide. And you can see that, that over just slightly more than a third of, of Christian respondents uh, identified that they needed additional space now. They've got issues of, of 
uh, confinement in terms of, of their current spatial needs, as well as, again, getting on for another third, 30%, um, who identified a likely need for, 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 for uh, space in future. The former figure, much higher for, for Muslim respondents to the survey. So 58, getting on for 60% of Muslim groups in the borough who responded to this survey uh, identified that they, they, they need additional space now. They've got spatial issues uh, currently. And then a further uh, uh, 15, 16, 17% uh, so that they are likely to need uh, space, further space in the near future. So there's clearly an issue of, of growing uh, need and, 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 and emerging, <coughs> emerging uh, patterns in the current time. Of course, when you start to factor in, this is the other uh, um, point of this study, was to project way into the future, all the way down to 2050. Of course, then that becomes enlarged even, even further. We have unmet demand at the moment. We have a, um, a, a growing uh, population um, in, in, and growing religious populations. Clearly, that, 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 that need is going to continue uh, emerging for the, for the foreseeable future. And this is, I'm just going to show these quite boldly without really summarising it, but I think they more or less speak to themselves. What we've, uh, what we've shown uh, through projection work is that uh, the Christian and the Muslim population in particular, not, not only those, but, but those groups in particular, are going to grow substantially um, between the period um, from, from now until, uh, until 2050. A little bit on how we generated this, these are more methodological points now. We, we, we didn't start from scratch, so we didn't estimate... Um, values for, for migration, um, mortality, um, and, and, and so on, and framed around religious, bespoke religious projections. We took the GLA um, ethnic population projections, we adjusted them using the borough populations to allow for anticipated um, development of housing, so building um, new, new, new housing that they, they're expecting to build in the foreseeable future. And then we apportioned the, the ethnic populations but, uh, to in, into religion groups using the cross tabulations from the 2001 2011 census. Not perfect, um, but robust, uh, at least for the purposes of, of this study. And helpful because it, it fleshed out the points I was making earlier in the presentation that we get a sense of, of how particular um, ethnic groups within broader religious designations are, are growing vis a vis one another. That's particularly important in terms of the, Af the growing, extensively growing African Christian uh, population. And this slide bears that out. So you can see, um, obviously, I've talked before about how the, uh, the, the Christian population between 2001 2011 uh, fell. Um, but some of that fall is already being offset by the growth of the African Christian um, presence. And that will continue until the meeting point roughly around 2049 2050. Um, so there's, a, there's an offsetting there, and it's not only the African Christian population, but other um, ethnic groups within the, with the overall Christian population as well. And hence, over time, a growth in the, in the uh, Christian population, which will be ethnically diverse. We also looked at attendance. So one of the things we were trying to do was just not make assumptions about the, uh, the overall broad sizes of, of in quotes, populations. But to think through, what does it mean in terms of actual spatial needs? So we, um, in the absence of, of, of better data, when we, there's an absence, we need better data for this kind of work. But we, we made some, some uh, assumptions and choices based on the best data available. Um, one source of which is British Social Attitudes in 2015. This wave, wave of the uh, BSA survey included a module on attendance. So we took uh, responses to that, to, to that survey, um, again, cross-tabulated um, by ethnicity and religion in terms of regular attendance um, and a place of worship, we reckon in terms of once a week or more. And then applied that to the population figures that I've just shown you. And then we used, we, we derived from our survey responses a, a spatial measure uh, of uh, unit of, of space to uh, religious population as, as a rough relationship between current spatial uses and, and attendance and then projected that forwards um, to, to, to allocate our, um, our spatial needs. I didn't think we, we probably don't need to get into this actually because it's a little bit, little bit techy. Uh, 
Um, but we, we estimated, and again, remember that this is key class because it hasn't been um, reported yet, but we estimated that uh, current needs are around 34,000 metres squared. There's also, um, on top of that, this is currently now 5,200 metres squared, roughly, of, of unmet spatial need in terms of what the survey respondents told us. Down to 2050, that's going to increase substantially. We're going to need uh, around 77,600 metres squared. So an extra, uh, what's that, 38,400 metres squared. If anyone can think what that means in terms of buildings, I actually can't on my feet, but uh, it's a lot of space. It's a lot of space that we will need in the future. There's already unmet, uh, unmet uh, spatial needs, and that's, that's clearly going to, going to grow in the future. And then that's just graphing uh, the figures I showed on the previous slide uh, for, for, for the trend. Rapidly bring this to, to conclusion, I said it was data heavy, so bring this to conclusion, it's very clear, just, just, just on this one case study, we could replicate this uh, in, in, in many other cases. Um, we could look at the, the centres of cities, we could look at, as we are in this case, issues of centrifugal movement out of uh, in ter in inner city areas. We would, we would find, obviously nuanced issues, but but the broad pattern would be, would be quite similar, that we are in a situation of dynamic population change. So we are then, uh, in terms of landscapes of faith in the UK, in a profound process of change, and the Barking and Dagenham case is a good case, a uh, sufficient case to, to, to illustrate this. So on the one hand, this is analysis that shows that the current pattern of building use um, already reveals significant unmet demand. There is still a, there is an issue now that, that communities are, 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 uh, are fighting for space, that's not quite the right word, but they are looking for, 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 for additional space. But also over time that this, this emerging pattern of need is going to increase substantially. Uh, and we would expect that, 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 that to continue. In terms of planning, major issues. It means that we have to think way beyond what we currently are. You know, our current debate is still playing catch up with issues um, of, of, of current need, recognising cultural difference and so on. We, you know, uh, the work that Andrew and I have done in the past shows that that debate still is way behind where we should be in terms of, of uh, culturally nuancing the way planning functions. And I'm sorry for the critical points, but I've worked on this for a long time. Um, and plan th there, are, there are some great signs in terms of particular authorities that are doing some fantastic work. Uh, I, I think this, this is far-sighted uh, that Barking and Dagenham in this case commissioned this work. And there are other authorities that we could cite as, as key um, instances of, of best practice uh, and showcasing creative thinking around these issues. But there is a lot of work still to be done in terms of planning response. And of course it follows through in terms of, of heritage. This is you know, fantastic that we're able to have this debate. But clearly the debates that we're having today uh, around issues of competing values as they attach to built heritage and what we understand by that. And related practicalities around the reuse of existing buildings um, that are recognised as, as, as having a, a legacy and, and, uh, and an important um, contribution to, to, uh, to our, um, our heritage are likely to amplify. So to, to start where I, to finish where I started, the key points are that these, these, these debates are going to, they're going to, to, to grow in importance rather than, rather than stabilise and, and, and be settled anytime soon. That's it. Thank you.